have some um, Fit Paws equipment. I've used the peanut once. I've used it for a FCE dog who has trouble. The owner has trouble just doing like, you know, stabilizing with a harness hind end exercises. He is um, paraplegic in the hind limbs. So what kind of dog? Uh, Collie. He's a bit older too. I think he might be in like the 10 year old range and that FC happened pretty early in his life. I think it was around like four or five. So he's been dealing with this for quite a long time. Her goals went from him being able to kind of walk with minimal support, but right now we're even just trying to build up some hind limb strength because he's so severely atrophied. So we stuck the red peanut under him with the little, um, like the tracks. I think it's really good for him because he, he gets, he doesn't like being, he's another one. He doesn't like being overhandled. Um, but it's letting him at least stand. Um, if you could kind of tell me a little bit about what other uses are good for that besides just like full body and hind limb support. And then also using a wobble board. Um, is that safe to use? I guess in post-op TPLOs, like some of my patients, or even ones that have um, confirmed cruciate, but owners don't necessarily want to um, go for surgery. I'm just a little bit worried. I, I understand it's an, I think it's an isometric, so it's a little bit safer, but I also am like, oh my gosh, when do I use this? I'm going to be making them, you know, shift and weight. How do I implement this safely? So the peanut, so like you can use it with, and, and of course there's different sizes of peanuts. Mm-hmm. Um, Narda, remember with CC, mm-hmm. used a kind of a peanut thing. Um, CC was a dachshund that had, um, I think, two a two level hemi laminectomy. Yeah, thoracic lumbar. And um, her mom ended up getting one so that she could she could have the peanut on the floor and then sit in a chair and then put CC on the peanut and hold her and exercise her. Mm-hmm. So as far as the peanut goes, you can do simple things with um, like even if the dog's laying down and just bounce them a little bit mm-hmm. or even rock them a little bit side to side. So if you have these small dogs that are really weak and can't be up long or they're a little bit past Post surgery, I wouldn't start this like within the first couple of weeks of surgery necessarily. Um, I would I'd be slower than that, but you can definitely use the the peanuts for that. Um, some dogs get really good, and then you can have them do a sit and a stand on the peanuts, wow. okay. or even a stand to down and back on the peanuts. Um, in my exercise. Um, module in in the move course but I can't remember which one it is now I have what's called a jelly tower where I have and I did this at the dog's home but it's just this progressive incline of um donut peanut that kind of thing so he's climbing up on those things these wobbly surfaces and stuff and climbing down them and all that Um, I've also used the peanut Again, I think this might be in the ex- one of the exercise modules where I had um, a French Mastiff had her front paws up on the peanut. And so we're doing an elevated stand. She had uh, TPLO surgery. And this was a, a little while after she um, recovered more from the surgery. But we were doing an elevated stand. And so then we were having her kind of walk forward a little bit. So she was having to move that um, peanut a little forward. You stand in front of her. She puts her front paws on the peanuts. And then you back up a little while she walks it forward. So get some mm-hmm. good core, hind end strengthening. Um, Ilioso-as oh. stretching. Yeah, good. Right. That's another one. Great. Good iliopsoas stretching. So there's all kinds of things that you can do on peanuts or also used what's called the big blue egg. So it's not indented, but it's rounder. I think that's what we use with CC was the big blue egg. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, you can do all kinds of um, activities with, with those peanuts. I don't know if that's helping you get some answers. And then also when I've had dogs who I, we've straddled over a peanut to kind of help them stand up, mm-hmm. then um, sometimes too, then I might put then a little giant balance disc on their front paws and balance foam on their hind paws. And, you know, then just start working on a little bit of weight shifting. Um, and some, you know, something creative like that. So but I love the idea of using the peanut just to get that dog standing. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Sometimes drapes kind of over that inner bit that. Yeah. That, that in, yeah. That, that really, indentation. Yeah. 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 And sometimes we end up using it like when I was at the rehab clinic and we would put them over that and then we could get help get their bladders expressed and stuff when we were short on hands um, for these big dogs. So what uh, would rolling if if I had this patient over the middle of it, supporting him standing, what would rolling it a little bit forward? Yes. That, so that's taking weight in the front and then rolling him back gently. That's just, pre- so it's just shifting weight back and forth, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then feel what's going on, like in their back and core, cause they are, and you can even when they're standing, you can even like pump it a little bit side to side if they're draped over it and you need mm-hmm. to take your hands and move it a little bit side to side. So is that obliques? Um, obliques will probably be firing in any direction. Okay. They should be. Um, in any direction that you're moving, but yes, the oblique certainly, um, that definitely is a good stimulator, even the latissimus and stuff. So it's kind of fun to play around with it and just see what kind of response you get from their body. And then sometimes too, if they're a little kind of wound up, I'll just do some really slow, relaxing bouncing is too big of a word. Um, but pumping and sometimes that can just help kind of calm them down and get them a little okay relaxed. If you do it a little bit more, I, I guess if you put a little bit more pressure, what are you just asking the stabilizing standing muscles then to work a little bit harder? I'm trying to think of like what if you if you use that as an exercise. Oh, like if you're pumping it or whatever. Mm-hmm. If you're pumping yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's kind it's like what we call perturbation training, we are, you know, in essence, kind of knocking them a little bit off balance. Mm -hmm. Um, And watch too what goes on even like in their paws and carpus and hawks and stuff, because you probably should, you know, we'll be seeing some stuff. I never look at the paws Mm -hmm. during these. I'm always looking at like, the biceps femoris or, (laughs) you know, like, I'm I'm never looking. Okay, I never even thought to look at the paws. (laughs) Okay. No, but, but I mean, you, you know, hopefully you will see some, you know, engagement in, in these distal limbs because they're trying to help stabilize while you're working on proximal mobility. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. yeah. Uh, and and that's, good. Oh, go ahead. What yeah. you well, you might've been going to say that like, that's good proprioceptive training, right? Yes. Good proprioceptive training. And it's also really good too, when they're up like that, then it's great too, to add even some cervical exercises, you know, just some tracking or, um, having them target their hand or their nose to your hand. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, because it's different if they're laying down and they're looking at you and then they're standing and looking yeah. at you. So mm-hmm. there's lots of, lots of fun exercises. Well, that, that sounds like CNS integration, like with your vestibular system, mm-hmm. your ocular, oculomotor, you know, ocular. Yeah. And- the vestibular ocular reflex and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're really yeah. bringing in a lot of different um, nervous system realms. Yes. And then with regards to the wobble board, let me make sure I understand what that piece of equipment is. Cause I hear people use like wobble board, balance board, da, da, and they, there can be different things. When I think of wobble board, I think of typically and it's circular and there's um, a half moon round thing underneath it. So it that's goes it. 360 degrees. Mm-hmm. That's okay. it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as far as you were wondering about that with a cruciate problem with cruciates, 
associates. I, I would hold off on those till way down the road. And then I think it could be a, you know, a fun piece of equipment. Um, first, it, you know, if, if it's a new um, issue, then typically one, first I would want to make sure, well, how are they even just on terra firma on firm surfaces standing? How are things engaging? How are they, what's their posture like? Are they, you know, willing to put weight into the leg? And if not, if I just kind of cup that knee and support it, is that enough where they're like, oh, okay, now I can shift weight on there. Then mm -hmm. as they do okay with that, then I probably try the balance foam. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and again, first, what I would do with that is front paws on the foam, keep yep. the hind paws on something really firm. Then if that goes okay, um, then you could try hind paws on the foam and front paws on firm. And then if that goes okay, then you can progress to the balance disc, the blue inflatable with the nubbies on it. Front mm -hmm. paws on the disc. And if that goes oak okay, and the hind paws on something nice and firm, mm -hmm. because you're making the front a lot more unstable, which is going to make the hind work. So I wouldn't just mm -hmm. jump to putting the hind paws on the disc. So front paws on and then if and hind paws on something firm. And then if that goes well, then you can try hind paws on that disc and front paws on something firm. If that goes well, then what would you do? Well, I guess if we're doing well. And I'm not going to do this in all in one session. I'm not right. about progressing through the weeks. Would we then want to try doing front and hind limbs? On something unstable? Like, yeah. Balance yeah. Foam or I would the try the foam. Different. Yeah. I would try the foam, like probably the hind on the foam and front paws on the disc. Yes. Because it foam is a little bit more stable. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then see how that goes. Um, and then I don't know if you have a fit bone, but then there's that you can add that up. And then what I would do if I got to where, and I probably wouldn't try the wobble board till probably when I'm thinking about the physiology of healing mm -hmm. one, I want to make sure pain was managed. There was no edema. I was having really good neuromotor patterning in those activities I showed you before. They're going on walks, you know, 15, 20 minutes and using their leg well. Um, and the range of motion is good in the knee. Then if I wanted to try the wobble board, I would take towels or and stick it under there first. So it's uh, got yep, a yep. little give to it, but not as severe as it, you know, being um, without the towels. Is that making sense? So much sense. This makes so much sense to work through this progression. And then, yeah. you know, have the towels in there good. And typically what I would like to do is have two or four towels so that, you know, I'm like, okay, boy, you're doing pretty good on this. And then maybe if I want to just take one of those out or even slide it a little bit. And so I'm really careful. I just want to try and avoid a really rapid balance response mm -hmm. at the get go. Yeah. Um, but eventually I think they could work up to a little bit on the, on the wobble board, depending on those metrics that I mentioned, there is, um, in one of the videos. And again, I think this is the exercise one. I'm sorry. I don't have the module number. I will get, I will get this okay. out, but there's one right where there. I was working with, um, Joey, he was a cruciate dog. He did not have surgery. He did have the brace. He worked out of the brace. And I had him on a roller board, his hind legs on the roller board, his front paws on the ground. And then I lifted his good leg, his right hind. So his cruciate leg was taking all the weight. And I was moving that board back and forth and side to side. But that was probably 
six or seven months or more down the road with him right mm -hmm. to try that that makes sense but in people that's what we do is we you know eventually put them on these boards and then but the therapist is the one starting off managing how much perturbation is provided right okay um, we just don't put our human ccl or acl patients on those boards and say here you go no the therapist <laughs> really really controls that and monitors that and all that kind of stuff so i appreciate that i think that my idea of integrating wobble board is like way too early for any of my patients to be honest so that's actually really good and again, you might could use it sooner, but only if you stuffed a lot of stuff in there and just made it just ever so tiny wobbly, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of times is how people get the dogs used to in the first place is they're like, um, first, does it have the, the, um, the thing you screw on? Does it have a variety of half moon shapes to make it a small perturbation or a large perturbation no it just came as is oh okay yeah some of them have you you have different sizes and so That's a lot good. of times what they'll do is then they just take that little ball thing off have the board flat on the ground and let the dog just get even used to that surface and texture first yeah Okay. Then they start with the smallest ball with the tiniest of perturbations and they may still have towels and stuff underneath, but yeah, the, um, you can go really, really slow how you introduce those balls or those wobble boards. Yeah. I and almost wondered if I'll end up using them more in my athlete dogs and agility dogs and everything. And then the wobble boards come out way later for any post injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, usually with those, when I'm in the phase now where we're going to return to play or return to sport phase of their recovery, then that's when I'll start probably getting those out. But like I said, introducing them very, very cautiously. Good to know. Oh, and if I'm they're agility dogs and stuff, they can be off. crazy on those things. So you yeah. just have to be careful. <laughs> okay. That's good. Yeah. I, I was, I took it with me for a uh, man. I think she's about actually, I guess she's like a six to eight week post-op actually, but it still, it felt too early. So I didn't do it, but I'm really glad now that I didn't do it. Good job. Good yeah. job with your intuition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 For sure.